Well, let's end turn and find out. There's no way they can give us the gold. There's no way. Oh my god, they gave us the gold. Oh my god, it's so broken. We have so much money, we can do whatever we want. Absolutely anything. Hello there, ladies and gentlemen. I'm the Spiffing Brit, and today we're playing Total War Rome Remastered. That's right, it's the original Rome Total War, but now in high resolutions and less bugs. And oh my goodness, they even improved and added in some new features. It's majestic, and best of all, you don't even have to play with the new features. You can play the exact same old broken Rome Total War now with just improved textures and none of the garbage bugs. But ladies and gentlemen, like all good classic Total War games, this bad boy has exploits and my goodness do we have an incredible set of exploits to show. Are you tired of actually trying to build up the Roman Empire using Roman military and Roman soldiers and Roman troops and Roman majesticness and infrastructure? What if instead of using proper Roman tactics to build an empire. You just bought the entire Roman Empire out of thin air. And best of all, you can buy the Roman Empire and have people pay you for it. That's right, today welcome to Total War Rome Art of the Deal Edition, whereby we're going to be destroying the brand new AI in this game by convincing the AI to give us all of their lands and in fact they're going to be paying us to take their entire lands off of them. Now without further ado ladies and gentlemen, let's dive into this brand new game. So make sure you sat back, relax, you have a nice warm cup of tea in hand. And if you're feeling especially fantastic you can even like this video now let's go break this video game so ladies and gentlemen we're going to start us with a brand new campaign of rome total war where we're going to be starting as the 100 percent historically accurate house of julii that's right we're playing as the romy boys led by the head of the house of julii mr smooth face over here now for the purposes of this video i'm going to be playing with all of the new remastered features because you know why not and we're going to be throwing ourselves into a classical average experience it's going to be lovely and remember the end game idea is to become the supreme controller of Rome and also have 50 provinces under your empire. Now, 50 provinces, that sounds like an exceedingly difficult thing to pull off. However, it actually turns out that with enough cheeky shenanigans, anyone can do it. And here we have it, ladies and gentlemen, the start of our glorious Roman Empire. Now, of course, you'll notice the game's a bit funky because this is Rome Total War. It's not historically accurate, but it's historically fun. That's how to look at this game. We are playing as one of three Roman factions. We're playing as the House of Julii, basically meant to represent kind of Julius Caesar going off to fight the barbarians. There's also the House of Brutii, the Green Boys, and the House of Scipii, the Blue Boys. These two factions are our friends, technically, and our forced allies. And then there's also the SPQR faction, representing the Roman Senate. These guys give us missions, they sit inside their lovely walled city, and they shout at us for playing poorly. Now, unlike most Total War games, this game has absolutely everything that you want from an experience. Most importantly, cities with actual population counts that matter. You need to grow a large town up so that it has enough people there so that you can actually turn it into a city and build fancier buildings. But if you start training an army in this town, well guess what? The population's going to go down. That's right, it actually pays to be at peace because that way you're not destroying your own economy by conscripting your entire nation to go die on the front lines to some elephants. That's what makes this game so majestic in my opinion. Now of course ladies and gentlemen, what I'm going to do is completely and utterly destroy this game because you might know that there are many other content creators out there who currently have their hands on this game and guess what? they're doing. They're playing it the way the game was intended to be played. They're going about doing fun adventures, conquering a few territories, but none of them are destroying the game to try and take over the world. So that's exactly what I'm going to do. Now, the first turn isn't exactly going to be very exciting. All we have to do is go capture this rebel village of Suggesta over here and, well, it's an absolute cakewalk. You just walk up to it and the village here doesn't even really have walls, so guess what? You just walk up to it. It's being defended by literal peasants, meaning that, guess what? It's going to be a walk in the park for Flavius Julius here, the smoothest man who's ever lived. You know, it's going to be such a walk in the park, I'm even just going to auto-resolve it. And there we go, glorious, clear victory, that first settlement is ours. Anyway, time to end this turn, and the next turn we're going to start the diplomatic shenanigans, as we're going to try and defeat the Gauls without ever going to war with the Gauls. Right, so it's turn two, and, uh, well, not much happened. I mean, we're discovering a little bit of the map using our boaty boys here. We've kind of spotted out Carthage down here, but most importantly, we've made our way up to the Gaulic tribes here. Now, the people people of Gaul at the start of the game are quite powerful, however we are completely utterly expected to dogpile their settlements here and decimate their entire kingdom. However, we have ways of abusing this entire mechanic in the game thanks to a handy little diplomacy feature here called Compensation. Now this is a brand new feature to Rome Total War Remaster where basically we can say that for previous transgressions in the history of our relationship with the Gauls, the Gauls need to pay us reparations for damages. Now this is quite simple, we would say hey please give us compensation. No 
and we'll settle all past grievances and we won't judge you for it. And in return, what are they going to give us? They'll offer us 877 denarii. That's quite nice, 877 gold. That's quite a good offer. However, we're going to make a counter proposal to the current offer because we're also going to want the 877 denarii. However, we want a minor additional bonus, just a minor additional bonus to be given to us by the Gorlick faction. And that is, of course, going to be um, their entire empire. That's right. We're going to select all of their major cities barring their capital. Uh, as you can see, this is six settlements. And bearing in mind, we have three settlements currently and it's turn two. Asking for six settlements from the AI is going to be impossible. And the AI knows this. It's saying, hey, this is a very demanding proposal. I mean, we're more powerful than you. We don't even particularly like you. And you're asking for 877 gold and all of our settlements by our capital. There's no way they're going to accept. However, this is the issue. They do accept. They say, please accept this offer so that we may put all of this behind us. What's the offer? They're going to offer compensation in the form of 877 gold and all six of their major settlements. In return, all we have to do is settle all past grievances. But here's the issue. We don't really have any past grievances. It's turn two of the game. We've only just met this faction. But here we go. They're about to give me their entire goddamn empire. <laughs> oh, dear, oh, dear, oh, dear. Ladies and gentlemen, that's how to take the Julio faction from having just two settlements on turn one to having nine settlements by the end of turn two. This is completely and utterly ridiculous. Oh, dear, oh, dear, oh, dear. Now, of course, the thing is, we've taken all of these settlements from the Gaul. The Gaul aren't going to like that. In fact, they're going to be quite annoyed because we've stolen all of their land and kicked out all of their garrisons. Luckily, these settlements that we steal actually come with their own brand new garrisons pre-prepared. I mean, they're not fantastic. They're mostly peasants, but I mean, they will defend these cities if they have to. Now, the thing is, the Gauls are going to 100% attack us at this point because we have all of these very undefended settlements. The Gauls only have one settlement and they have giant armies. So here's what you do. As you can see, relationship is down at zero there, ladies and gentlemen. It's not looking that good. Now, we're going to offer a compensation of 1,575 gold and also then throw in an alliance. And this is going to be seen as being a generous offer, ladies and gentlemen. So generous, in fact, that these guys are going to give us map information and heck, they'll even give us some money. Because look, they have a whole bunch of money in their treasury. But the thing is, they're actually having to start paying for all of their armies and they only have one settlement that makes money. So it should actually be quite easy for us to drain the entire economy of them. Although actually, we don't even need to do that because with just map information, they're going to accept an offer of an alliance. So there we go. The Gauls are now our allies and they've given us their entire settlements and empire. Oh dear, oh dear, oh dear. Now the thing is, all of these settlements are actually kind of happy. Now that we've kind of drained some of the population training up units, it's looking quite good for our empire. Just like that, ladies and gentlemen, we now have one of the largest factions in the game. Best of all, we're going to probably train up ourselves a new diplomat somewhere over here and then we'll be able to send that diplomat off to find more empires. But as you can see, end of turn two, um, I'd say we've done quite well. I think this must make us the largest faction in the game now. Can't really imagine that we're going to encounter anyone larger than ourselves at this point. Oh, and here's also the best thing. After doing a trade deal, we can now also demand compensation from Gaul. And the reason we're able to request compensation from Gaul is very simple. Gaul, this turn, decided to hand over its entire empire to us. But because they handed over all of these settlements, you'll notice that standing outside of all of our new settlements are Gaulic armies. And whilst we have an alliance, we don't have a military access agreement. That's meaning that all of these thousands of troops are trespassing in Roman territory. And do you know what happens when you trespass in Roman territory? Well, you owe compensation. That's right, we toll you for actually stepping into our lands. Consequently, we demand compensation and they're going to give us 182 gold. Actually, I'm going to need more than 182 gold, my friends. I'm actually going to require your entire gold-based inventory in the form of a regular tribute. That's right, I want 5,000 gold for the next 17 turns. Of course, I'm pretty sure the Gaulic AI can't even pay this. However, they're still going to accept it. <laughs> you know, I'm going to make a counter offer. How far can I take this? If I ask for regular tribute of um, 500,000 denarii and I ask for um, 20 turns of that, are they going to... Oh my goodness, okay. Propose. No! Oh my god. Okay, so the AI is going to accept a proposal of giving us 500,000 gold per turn for the next 21 turns. In return, we're going to look past the fact that all of their armies are standing inside the territory that they just sold for us because they haven't had a turn yet to move them out of our territory. And they accept. They accept. Okay, well, that's, um, that's the end of the negotiations. The negotiations were swift and you'll see that next turn, we're expecting to make 500,000 gold. I mean, they 
don't have the money for this. So what happens when I end the turn? Does the money just come out of thin air because the AI kind of has to cheat on this one? Well, let's end turn and find out. There's no way they can give us the gold. There's no way. Oh my God, they gave us the gold. Oh my God, it's so broken. We have so much money. We can do whatever we want. Absolutely anything. 500,000 gold. We can buy the entire world. Now, effectively, ladies and gentlemen, the crux of this exploit is that we're actually committing the Roman equivalent of insurance fraud. We buy ourselves a settlement and then complain when the owner hasn't cleared out in one turn and use that to lodge an insurance complaint. That insurance complaint can then generate us millions and millions of gold, making us the richest being in the entire known galaxy. This is the power of the insurance scandal. It was as powerful back in Roman times as it is in modern times, ladies and gentlemen. Some things simply never change. And of course, we've kind of exploited the Gaul faction here, but of course, Gaul aren't the only faction in the game. There's a whole bunch of other factions, like, for example, the Germanic tribes over here, ladies and gentlemen. So we're going on a magical adventure to go say hello to the Germanic tribes. <laughs> Meanwhile, Gaul is going to bankroll the entire empire for the next 20 turns. Of course, they're going to give us so much money, we won't actually have anything to do with it all. Anyway, time for us to end our turn here, because my goodness, this has gone fantastically well. Oh, and we've just met Spain, ladies and gentlemen. <gasps> they want trade rights for map information. This is fantastic. We're going to accept, and then we're also going to make an offer of our own, because we've just run into them. So naturally, what are we going to do now that we've met Spain? Well, we're going to request compensation. And of course, they, we just simply send out this offer. They're going to offer us 1,000 gold. In return, we make compensation. Just one slight issue. We want 1,000 gold from you, Spain. And we also want you to give us the region of all of your three major cities by your capital. This is, of course, very demanding, but you have no choice to accept. And, you know, whilst we're here, we also want you to throw in a regular tribute of 500,000 gold for the next 21 turns, because whilst you're very wealthy now, as soon as the next turn ticks over, you're going to be completely and utterly bankrupt. Will you accept this stupid trade deal? Of course you'll accept this stupid trade deal, Spain. It's fantastic. Well, it's, um, it's turn four. We have 12 million gold. And what is reality anymore? <laughs> we now own almost all of Spain. Right, now it's time for me to end my turn. And once again, well, I think we're up to just a stupendous amount of money. Yep, looks like we're up to 2 million there. Fantastic stuff. Now we can see the Carthaginian captain here is probably trying to make his way over to one of our large settlements. However, of course, he won't be able to take it because, you know, we're absolutely mighty and powerful. But more importantly, we can just bribe this guy. With the right amount of money, you can simply bribe entire armies out of existence. With an offer of just 18,000 gold, this random captain will disband his entire military force. I know, it's incredible. But of course, before we do that, we're going to request compensation from Carthage. What are they going to offer us? Well, we're going to ask for some settlements from Carthage. What are they going to be able to offer us? Well, it turns out quite a lot of land. Of course, this is very demanding. So first, we need to just offer and they say, hey, we will give you 140 gold trade rights and map information. However, we want all past grievances settled. We'll, of course, request for all of their territory. So we'll take Lilibaeum, we'll take Fapsus, Keralis, Halma, and Corduba, settlements that we have never even seen before. And we're just going to request all of those. Along with that, we also want to make sure that Carthage is completely and utterly bankrupted. So we're going to request the regular tribute deal of $1 million for just 25 turns. And we send off that offer. And of course, you know they're going to lovingly accept it. And we're bam! The entirety of Carthage is now completely and utterly bankrupted. At the same time, we'll also offer ourselves an alliance. They're, um, they're not going to accept that, but of course that makes complete and utter sense. In return, we're going to offer compensation of 10,000 gold. 10,000 gold is nothing to us, and besides, they're going to be bankrupted next turn. And now we're just going to bribe them as well, so that this army disappears out of existence. It's just going to cost us 17,000 gold. Wabam, the army is gone. Easy peasy, lemon squeezy, we now own the entirety of Spain, bar one settlement. Oh, and the settlement's technically owned by an ally of ours, so uh, not exactly an issue. But honestly, this turn has been um, quite good for us. We've gained a lot of territory. Oh my goodness, this has actually gone fantastic. I didn't expect this exploit to go so well. This is ridiculous. We've got 2 million gold in the bank. I've seen other content creators playing the remastered version, but um, none of them have discovered this yet. And most of them are just taking their time, slowly playing the game, conquering a few territories. I'm yet to see any of them actually finish the game, and I think we might finish the game very, very quickly. Considering the aim is to control 50 settlements and then also conquer Rome. Well, it's turn five, ladies and gentlemen, and we control one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen settlements. We're not quite halfway there, but for turn five, I'd say we're doing quite well. Normally by turn five, you're conquering at maximum your fifth settlement. Oh dear, oh dear, oh dear. Right now, 
time for us to end our turn because things have gone just so absolutely fantastically. Oh, we've just met Britain, ladies and gentlemen. Hopefully they offer us a trade deal here. Yes, they want trade rights and perfect. This is going to allow us to actually negotiate to the fullest with Britain because we can see that they're very clearly posturing to attack us. However, they're not going to attack us if we hit them with the one-two compensation maneuver. We ask for compensation. They say, okay, we'll give you 870 gold. Also, you have to accept the offer of compensation or we'll attack you. I've got to say, good how the hell does this work? In return, however, we're also going to request that they give us all of their territory here. And that's right, we're wanting all three of these settlements, so I'm pretty sure we gain control of York as well as Ireland, and then this nice province they have here in Normandy, meaning the only settlement Britannia will be left with is Londinium. Alongside of this, we'll also want an alliance request. We'll also want all of the map information possible. But just how extreme can we take this? Well, I want a regular tribute of 99999. Oh wait, no, apparently the maximum you're allowed to ask for is a humble one million a turn. Of course, I mean, asking for more than that would be stupid. So we're going to ask for 1 million a turn for the next 32 turns, send this offer off to them, and oh, they would be fine with that if it wasn't for the alliance, of course. Okay, let's request for compensation. We can do the alliance later, don't you worry. So we want all of your settlements, there we go, very nice, and the regular tribute, please, of every single bit of your money. Okay, we submit this offer off, and of course they're going to accept it. Lovely. Oh, they really, really wanted that offer. They wanted it so much, we actually had to accept the offer of them giving us 1 million gold per turn or they would attack us. That's how friendly the Britannia tribes are. Oh, and look, they've immediately attacked us. <laughs> oh, classic Britannia AI. I mean, it's a bit of a surprise that they've decided to attack us considering that they've left us with the settlement of Ibaricum here, also known as York, which is fielding an army of peasants. Look at the amount of peasants in this settlement. It's incredible. Okay, well, let's grab some barbarian mercenaries here, as well as a metric ton of peasants, load them all up into this guy and then attack this army. Now, if we win this battle here, ladies and gentlemen, we're probably going to get ourselves a brand new commander who will help us wrestle control of the Britannic mainlands. Because of course, I mean, whilst we shouldn't really control the settlements around Lancaster and York, we do. And this is our lovely commander. One of the other reasons to love Rome Total War is the custom battle speeches that happen in front of every battle. It's fantastic. If you start, say, repeatedly losing to an enemy, you're going to have speeches that represent that. It's absolutely wonderful. Anyway, we're going to be facing the enemy, so we might as well do it on a slight hill here. We've access to these lovely barbarian mercenaries. Barbarian mercenaries are great for one very important reason. They have a melee attack of seven. However, if you press this lovely button here, you actually increase the unit's attack for 30 seconds by 10, which is ridiculous. Anyway, the enemy are bringing in just 363 men to try and defeat my army of mostly peasants, and well, lo and behold, of course we're going to win. All right, let's let them tire themselves out as they wander these cold fields leading up to us. Right now they're posturing their way towards us and they're holding their flank. Okay, but now they're coming in for their attack. Fantastic. Now our aim is to go for a proper flanking maneuver here where we fully encompass them, uh, which shouldn't be too difficult because it looks like they're just going to charge straight into the middle of my peasant line, which is going to be good. So we're going to charge this warband with these men. And of course, we'll just wrap up the corner by doing a quick war cry and then charging in the peasants. Go peasants, go! Now, of course, this is Rome Total War where basically the way to win every single battle is just wrap your enemy from behind and then watch them break. And there we go, that's one unit completely and utterly broken. And now you just have to charge them down and get a whole bunch of kills. And whilst all of that is happening, the enemy peasant unit has just opened up to this flank uh, and naturally we'll be able to defeat them as well. Oh dear, oh dear, we've done it. We've done it, we've absolutely cracked them. There's only one unit of warband left and our warband's looking fantastically good. The enemy is routing, perfect. And after this, we should get ourselves a brand new general to help us conquer the British Isles with. There we go. We even killed the enemy general. Lovely. What a glorious fight. Considering our army consisted of basically just peasants, that's a fantastic victory for us. Oh, and it looks like Gaul has given themselves a brand new territory. <gasps> They've got a new city. Well, guys, I mean, let's be friends. Let's be real friends. I want compensation. And you know what? They're going to give me one of their cities. Oh, it's very nice of you just to hand over that city straight away. We don't even need to have a chat about it. You know how this operation works. Thank you for the free land, my friends. It's just perfectly balanced. <laughs> anyway, I'm expecting Britain to basically end its war with us next turn. And in the meantime, we're going to be sailing our diplomats over to the Greek Isles. Right now, it's time for us to end our turn. Oh, and we've just met Numidia, ladies and gentlemen. They want trade rights. And of course, we're going to accept trade rights and then do a counteroffer. I would really like compensation. What are you going to give me? 600 gold? I think you can do better. How about uh, your free spare 
settlements that aren't your capital. Yes, that would be lovely. As well as also a regular tribute of every single thing you own for the next 21 turns. That would be lovely. And there we go. Of course, you're going to accept lovely stuff. And then, of course, if I offer compensation of 560 gold, as well as an alliance. Now, that's a generous offer, my friends. Look at that. Of course, you're going to accept that alliance. Lovely to have you on board. Thank you for all of your settlements, Numidia. So um, that's given us this random settlement in the middle of nowhere. This one over here in Northern Africa, as well as anything else. Oh, yes, this settlement over here near to Egypt, the large town of Siwa. Okay, it's fantastic. So what's happened to the Brits whilst we've been away? Well, it looks like they've decided to do a full retreat off the continent. Yep, they've loaded their entire army up back onto a boat and they're taking it home now. Well, that makes my life a little bit easier, although I can't follow them because I don't own a boat of my own. Instead, a brand new general has spawned here, Caius Harsa. Fantastic stuff. Have we got any more mercenaries to buy? Yes, there we go, barbarian mercenaries. And he's going to allow us to just simply waltz on up to the enemy here. <gasps> Is this just two faction leaders? It's just two general units. <gasps> Perfect. Oh, yes, we're going to murder the British family members here. Oh, this is a fantastic game of Rome Total War, my friends. Perfectly balanced indeed. Well, I guess technically this is an ambush, so they've caught us off guard, but uh, it'll be fine, don't worry. They're just general units. Right, so the battle immediately starts, and they are just rushing us in the flank, which is fine. All we need to do is line up the spearmen and um, maybe run the peasants away. But yes, as long as the spearmen get in, we've basically nailed it. Our heavy cavalry also attacking from the side uh, should do okay. Oh, wait, no, 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 heavy cavalry doesn't do good against chariots. Run, heavy cavalry. Stay close to the general unit, though. Stay close and give the general bonus. There we go. Boost some morale. Toot your horn. And most importantly, don't die and let the barbarian mercenaries kill the chariots. There we go. We've killed the enemy general. And with the enemy general dead, they've just immediately routed. Oh, chariots. You. Oh, my God. The game's loud all of a sudden. And it's quiet again. What on earth is going on? I think the game's trying to fight back because I've been exploiting it. Like, okay, you break the game. I'll break your eardrums. Well, it looks like we're doing good nonetheless. The only settlement the Brits have is Londinium and well it hasn't exactly got many units because they've run out of money to fund their military so we should be able to knock them out completely by just training up an army of peasants and besieging London with some kind of mega commander oh and yes it looks like Carthage is indeed attacking us well this is fine it's going to be quite exciting and it looks like Gaul is also attacking us as well all in the same turn well this is fine because I think we can actually cheese this a bit and Germany wants trade rights and map information of course we'll accept that and Germany I think it's time I think it's time we do something something quite fun, Germany. Germany, how about some compensation, you know, for all of the grievances that we've had? Uh, you're going to give me 432 gold, that's great, but I'm also going to need uh, these four major settlements from you, please. Thank you very much. As well as also a regular tribute of every single thing that you could potentially ever earn for the next bajillion years. Thank you very much. And there we go, that's an agreement. And finally, of course, I will offer you a military alliance and compensation for my grievances. And there we go, bygones be bygones, we are now allies. Perfect. And apparently Apparently you're wealthy. Well, that's going to change next turn, my friends. Oh, yes. Now you are absolutely poor. There we go. We just scared off one of the uh, generals of the Britannic Empire. Although the Britons are now basically decreasing their army size each turn. They're now down to just uh, one faction there and some warband units. So um, they're not really able to field much of an army. I mean, the same can be said for Gaul. They're basically just reduced to some warbands. Now, of course, what we're going to offer is demand that they become our protector. They're, of course, not going to accept that because they think that they actually have some strength. In return, we're going to offer them a single payment of how about 1 million gold. This is fine because of course we'll be getting this back next turn and apparently this is a very generous offer. So of course we're going to demand it and there we go. Gaul is now our protector. <laughs> Despite the fact that last turn they wanted to go to war with us and now they say welcome friend how can we help you? Well you can help us by simply ending the siege which is exactly what's happened and now they are our little vassal subject. <laughs> well it was a one turn war ladies and gentlemen and it went fantastically. But yeah that's been a great turn for us, we picked up a few more settlements. You know, I realize we should probably also buy the rest of the Macedonian Empire because, well, you might as well. So we'll request compensation. What are they going to offer us? Money. Perfect. Right. Uh, give us money. Also give us all of these regions here, as well as most importantly, a regular tribute of the most amount of money you could possibly give us. Fantastic. And then I would like that for the next 40 turns. Perfect stuff. Are you going to accept? Of course you'll accept. Thank you for all of your settlements. Well, and just like that, the Roman Empire is expanded quite a little bit more. You know, we'll also offer an alliance to them, and of course Macedonia is going to accept any alliance we throw their way because, you know, they, they just want it. Well, it's the end of turn 9 and we now have 39 settlements, meaning we are just a few settlements away from technically finishing the game, although we do need to hold Rome for the game to actually end. 
uh, I suppose we could build up a large military here and just walk into Rome. Yeah, you know what? Let's give that a go. All right, let's just train up a nice military. Although by train up a nice military, I mostly just mean waltz outside and see if there are any nice mercenaries nearby. All right, and I think it's time for us to end our turn. I mean, it went absolutely swimmingly, so why not? Okay, well, now we're down in Egypt, so it's time to initiate Operation Destroy the Egyptian Economy. Uh, we sadly can't request compensation. However, of course, remember, we can just buy a region. Egypt has a huge quantity of cities, including cities like, say, Petra here. Uh, so we're going to just quite simply start with a small town. A small town will be the cheapest purchase. So we want Petra. We'll make a single payment of how about 100,000 gold? Very demanding. Fine. 200,000 gold. Very generous. Perfect. Give me Petra and they'll give it to me. At the same time, we can now request compensation. They're going to offer compensation. Um, what? They just gave us nothing? I asked for compensation and they didn't give me anything. What? Now I just have Petra. I want more than, I want more than just Petra. Okay, fine. We need to trade more then. Give me the town of Bostra then. Bostra. I want Bostra for a single payment of 150,000. Okay. Is that enough? Is that enough? That's very generous. Perfect. You give me Bostra. Now we make a new offer. Compensation. Compensation. Make single payment of 100 gold. Right? Right? Okay. Make an offer. And of course you're going to accept. Jesus. I need more. I need more. <laughs> Egypt, you're literally killing me. You're actually also happy that I'm buying these settlements from you. You don't seem to be upset. New offer. We're going to close out this menu, open it again. I want compensation and I want the entirety of the rest of your empire. You're going to decline this and hopefully counter off. Yes, you counter offer. Your counter offer is to give me 130,000 gold. Okay, I'm going to counter offer this one even more and ask for a regular tribute. Okay, I want a regular tribute of 1 million gold for a million turns. Is this going to pass? Is this going to pass? Yes, it passes. Okay, I get all of my money back, all of the settlements and and all of the money. Perfect stuff. Egypt now completely and utterly hates me. So this is where we offer them compensation of 13,000 gold. That's going to clear up everything. And we can also offer in the alliance, which is, of course, very generous. Then map information for map information. And we're good friends. Lovely stuff. Oh, and this is it. We now control 50 regions exactly. <gasps> we can now attack the capital. And I'm pretty sure that means we win the game. Oh, my goodness. This is it. This is it, ladies and gentlemen. Here's actually, I think I know how we do this. I think I know how we do this. Okay, this is... I think is going to allow us to defeat Rome Total War on turn... I don't even know what turn it is anymore. Turn 10. Turn 10 Rome Total War victory. I think I know how to pull it off. Here's how we're going to do it, ladies and gentlemen. Remember, every time we declare a war on someone, we can negotiate a peace where they become our protector, right? And if they become our protector, I'm pretty sure that means we control the city of Rome. So we're going to attack our ally and declare war on Rome. As we can see, the settlement is pathetic. And we can use our diplomat here to negotiate with them and our for them to become our protector. In return, we're going to make a single payment of 1 million gold. And of course, it's very generous that they're going to accept, and it's happened. SPQR are now our little subjects. They're our protectorate, although for some reason it is showing that we are at war, and they're our protectorate. Okay, now I'm not sure how this one's working out, but maybe if I press N turn, the game will just sort itself out. Then again, it could just be completely and utterly balked now. Oh my goodness, and everyone's been outlawed. <gasps> oh my goodness, this is fantastic. Okay, sadly, this, this has broken up our alliances with every other faction in the game because we've been outlawed by the Senate, but because we turned them into a protectorate and then they immediately declared war on us because they can't be protectorates, I imagine it's broken the game and it's outlawed the other two factions at the same time. So everyone's at war with, with SPQR now? Okay, this is, um, this is getting complicated now, but we are still definitely at war and also still not at war because we can ask for a ceasefire. Okay, I'm confused. Let's then turn and see what happens because this this is an- What is going on? The men are going hyperspeed. Egypt is naturally declaring war on us because they kind of have to. But of course, when they declare war on us, this is how we're going to be able to turn Egypt into a protectorate and gain control of their last settlement of Alexandria. So if anything, they're making our lives a lot easier by doing this. Oh my goodness, this is getting very exciting. Okay, but no, the game is not over, meaning um, I do actually have to attack the Roman settlement here. So we're just going to build some rams, I guess, and some siege towers. There we go. A couple of siege towers, maintain siege. And here's what we're going to do. We're going to use my agent here to bribe the enemy generals. This guy is really good, so we're going to bribe him for 4,000 gold. He's now ours. He's really good. Command talent, religious, bureaucrat, sharp, night fighter, lovely stuff. And with him, we've now got an additional just commander lying around. But it actually looks like things have gone relatively well here. And next turn, I think we should be able to take the capital of Rome. Right, it's turn 11. Turn 12, we're going to finish the game, ladies and gentlemen. So have we got any last minute reinforcements? I suppose all of this Hastati can come join the fight. And, uh, 
uh, yep, it's time for us to attack Rome. Assault. Do we even need to fight this? No, we can auto-resolve it. The final fight of Rome. Oh, you know what? We might as well just auto-resolve it. Clear victory. 30 casualties. They only had three units defending Rome, and it's ours. Oh, yes, oh, yes, oh, yes. And we've done it, ladies and gentlemen. Turn 12. We've completed the game. We are the savior of the people of Rome. Oh, my goodness. We've done it. We've destroyed SPQR. They're done for. This is completely and utterly ridiculous. It's 265 BC, turn 12. We control 60 regions and we completed the game. Well, ladies and gentlemen, that's been our first look at Rome Total War. Flavius Julius, in his entire lifetime, has gone from being a random faction leader to becoming the emperor of the known world. If you want to see more fantastically broken Rome Total War videos, then hey, make sure to give this a video a like and do consider subscribing. And I'll be sure to cover more of this lovely game in the future. There's a few really silly challenges I want to try out for this game, like say a peasant only run or a mercenary only run, or my personal favorite, the completely overpowered and perfectly balanced horse archer only run, which is completely and utterly stupid to watch because of how overpowered they are. Anyway, as always, hop on down to the comment section and I'll see each and every one of you there. As always, a huge thank you to each and every one of our majestic patrons who make these fantastic videos all the more possible. Seriously, pat yourselves on the back, you lovely sausages. And if you sat there wondering what video you'd like to watch next, look no further than this one on screen now, hand chosen by myself to be absolutely perfect for you. Anyway, I'll see each and every one of you in the next one. Have a majestic day and goodbye for now.